Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do another playthrough of Cthulhu Death May Die. We're going to do Season 1 Episode 4, Eldritch Idols. Now just like always, make sure to turn on those Klingon subtitles. You should see one popping up right now so that tells you that they are on just in case I miss anything in editing. Also, any of the big guys in this, Bill Holmes painted, and they look amazing. <laughs> so if you like them and you want him to paint yours, check the description below for his contact details. I love his work. It's part of the reason why I want to get this back out on the table is just to show it off. I also haven't played against Cthulhu himself yet, so that is the uh, Elder One we're going to use for this scenario. So without further ado, let's take a look at our scenario and start our playthrough. Those dang cultists will do anything to summon their god. Sacrificing innocent blood in the dead of night is just another Tuesday. But our job is too crazy for the innocents, so we sometimes have to hide in the shadows to save them. What we need to do to disrupt the ritual, we have to overload two normal gates simultaneously with the Elder Ones uh, when the Elder One advances. When Cthulhu advances, each guard moves one space towards the nearest investigator. Then all investigators carrying any artifacts with at least one guard in their space are arrested. They drag uh, or drop all of their artifacts in their current space and move their figure to the cell space. After that, if there are investigators holding two artifacts at each of two different normal gates, they overload the gates and disrupt the ritual. Our special rules here is after the ritual is disrupted, we can remove all the guards from the board and ignore any effects that would cause them to do anything. Our two scenario specific actions we have is distract guard and pick up artifact. Choose one guard up to two spaces from you, move that guard up to two spaces. And we have pick up an artifact. Pick up any number of artifacts in your space. The investigator carrying an artifact gains its listed effect. Artifacts may be traded. If an investigator dies, drop the artifact in their space. We've set up our board like so. We have four guards. One, two, three, and four. We'll start in this space. The two scenario-specific enemies are hard-hitting. Uh, we have the Biakshi. When it attacks, each star counts as a success, and they roll three dice. And then the Shagoth, this guy is terrible. When attacking or attacked, each of the tentacles makes the investigators lose one additional sanity. Yeah, so they're not going to be fun to deal with. We, of course, have our Cultus, no special effect to health. And then our Star Spawn. When attacking or being attacked while in a Riley space, add two insanity to the roll. Finally, we have Cthulhu himself. We have these Raleigh tokens. So whenever he advances, put a Raleigh token on your space. If there's already a token there, put one in the nearest space that does not have one. Summon a cultist on each Raleigh space. Move the star spawn one space towards you. If it's not on the board, summon it uh, at the blue gate. And of course, we have Cthulhu himself. Bill, he outdid himself. This guy looks amazing and terrible at the same time. <laughs> We place him here. Remember when he gets to the red spot, he spawns. So once he moves up to this spot, also if we disrupt the ritual, he'll spawn and we need to take him out. We're going to play with two investigators today. Our first one is Maxim. Maxim is a mad dog. Whenever you lose one or more sanity, you may deal one wound to an enemy in your space. He has the arcane mastery, so the star is considered a success, and brawling, so whenever he attacks an enemy in his space, he gets a green die. He also has short-term memory loss, so every time he hits the red spot on his insanity track, uh, if you're at full stress, which of course this is his stress, so if it goes all the way to the edge, then we get to heal all of your stress and discard one discovery card of your choice. If you're not at full stress, take one, uh, take one stress. Over here, we have Albert Einstein, or just Bert. Bert has smarts. You may investigate in unsafe spaces after fighting the enemies. So he can investigate pretty much every turn. Arcane Mastery again as well, so those stars are considered a success. I should say just the first one while he's at level 1 Arcane Mastery. And Toughness. You have one free reroll when, at uh, when attacked or rolling for fire. His insanity trigger is masochism. It says each time you take wounds, put the same number of wound tokens on this card. Whenever we hit that red space on his insanity track, if there are no tokens on this card, take one wound. Otherwise, remove all tokens from this card and heal one stress per token removed. We've shuffled up our mythos cards and our discovery cards. We have everything set out on the table. We have an artifact here. We have an artifact over here. We have an artifact way up there, 
And where's our fourth one? Oh yes, it's way over here. The cell, if ever we go to jail, is right over here. So that's if ever we have an artifact in our hands and one of the guards activates and they get to our space, they're then gonna send us to jail. <laughs> With us all being set and ready to go, I think we're going to start off with Maxim. To start your turn, you can take a total of three actions. You can run, that allows you to move three spaces, and then if you move out of a space with an enemy, they simply follow you, they don't hurt you, so you can kind of bunch up enemies together, which is nice, or get them out of the way for each other. We can attack a single enemy. We can rest, but we can only do that in a safe space. We can trade... Uh, uh, items that we have or those artifacts and then if we have any episodic actions so maxim is going to start us off with a run he's going to run one two so since he moved out of this space and the shagath is here and yeah, that shagath is going to come right into this room so now we're in a room with both a cultist and a shagath uh, but I'm hoping, <laughs> because of how the Shagath works, we're likely going to hit our Sanity track level. That will hopefully level up our Brawling, and we can be stronger at attacking. Because this Shagath has a total of 10 health. It's going to be a lot to take him down. For our second action, we're going to attack the Shagath. Now, whenever you attack or do any sort of test, you're always going to roll three black dice. But because we have the Brawling skill, we're attacking an enemy that's in our space, we get to add one additional green die. So we're going to roll these four up. We're looking for exclamation points as successes, and then one of those star symbols will be considered a success. For any of the tentacle symbols, we're going to lose one sanity, but with the Shagath, we're actually going to lose one additional sanity. So we lose two in total. So let's pick up our dice and give them a roll, and that's two total damage. I'm most certainly going to spend one stress out of our four to re-roll one of these. So I'm going to re-roll this one. That was terrible. I'll use another stress to re-roll this. That's a hit. And I think I'll use my third out of four stress to re-roll this one. And that's another hit. But we do have a sanity hit. We just dealt a total of four damage to that Shagath. Normally, we'd only move up our sanity by one, but because we were attacking that Shagath, it'll move us up to two. It's counted as two instead of one. Don't forget our Mad Dog, Dog ability. Whenever you lose one or more sanity, you may deal one wound to an enemy in your space. We're going to hit that Shagath, so the Shagath now has five total damage. For our final action, let's attack that Shagath again. We have a total of one, two, three successes. Let's use our final stress to reroll this one. That will work. One, two, three, four total damage. And we have a sanity hit, so we're going to lose sanity, but that will also mean we can deal one damage to that Shagath. So that means we dealt the Shagath one, two, three, four, plus one is five. That will take the Shagath off the board. Now I'm actually kind of sad that we put our, ourselves in the same space as that cultist because the cultist will get to attack us. We used our last stress for that reroll. We would normally just lose one sanity, but it's double against the Shagath, so that means we hit our sanity trigger. Our sanity trigger says if you're at full stress, heal all of your stress. Heck yeah, that's what we want to do. We'd have to discard a discovery card, but we don't have one. Since we hit this spot, we also get to level up. Uh, it's a question of do we want to do brawling or mad dog? I think we're going to start with brawling and then we'll level up mad dog as we go. So now with brawling, we can attack everyone in our space and then divide up the hits as however we choose for those enemies. At the end of Maxim's turn, we have to draw a Mythos card, and we have the Sleeper Awakens. If there are two or more Raleigh spaces adjacent to each other, no, there aren't any out yet, so that does nothing. Yes. Now, though, we look to see if there's any enemies in our space, and unfortunately, that Cultus is there, so he gets to attack us with two green dice, and he hits us for one damage. Could certainly be worse, but we could have investigated had I not gone to a space with a Cultist. Oh, well. Compared to Maxim's turn, Bert's turn's going to be very simple. <laughs> he's just going to run one space into here. Then he's going to do the episodic action to distract the guard, and he's going to push this guard two spaces away. One, two. So he's in this random room, and he's not near uh, Bert. Bert then, for his third action, he's, gonna, he's going to pick up this artifact, and it states he'll be able to heal one wound at the end of your turn. And I think that's that'll happen as long as he has that artifact, which is awesome. Bert will draw his Mythos card, and he has, okay, the first Elder Sign symbol. Once we have three of those at the end of your turn, we then have the Elder One advance. If the Star Spawn is on the board, it's not. 
Otherwise, we just need to summon the star spawn in the blue space. Now, this one I did paint. I painted way back in the day. Oh, it doesn't look terrible, but <laughs> definitely not build level. The blue gate is over here in the stairs, so now the star spawn is here, and we have our first of the three elder symbols. Once we get our third one, then the elder one advances. We are currently in a location with no enemies, so we get to draw one of our discovery cards, and we have the paranoid guard. I've seen the mannequins in the science wing moving on their own, I swear it. You may take two stress to claim either the guard or the shotgun. Okay, the guard uh, has three health. When this companion takes his last wound, summon a cultist in his space. The shotgun, before attacking, you may choose to gain two green dice and target any number of enemies in the target's space. Split the wounds as you like. If you do, after the attack, move the nearest guard two spaces towards you. Yeah, we're taking the shotgun. What are you talking about? That sounds awesome. We can make a ton of noise and let Maxim go ahead and pick things up or give this to Maxim. Uh, so we have to take two stress to claim that. Bert is totally fine, two stress, no problem. At the end of his turn, he's at full health, so he doesn't get to heal. We'll just end his turn now and move over to Maxim. Maxim will start his turn by moving. It looks like there is a door here for one and two. This cultist is going to come with. And then action two, we're going to attack both cultists. We're attacking an enemy in our space, so we get that additional green die. Let's see what we get. We have one success. Well, let's use our first stress to reroll this one. That is three successes. We'll use our second stress to reroll this one. Nice. One, two, three, four. Remember, we can split up our successes. So we did use two stress for it, but both of these cultists are toast. And that roll didn't even touch our sanity, which is kind of nice. For our second action, let's pick up this artifact. So we have move one additional space when you run. Whoa, that's perfect for Maxim. Although he does have that extra move for his final action, one, two, three, he's just going to run back into here, hang out with Bert. We would have one more movement, but I am thinking of having uh, Maxim go this way, Bert go this way, because there's less difficult enemies. <laughs> Maxim is probably going to be the one that can take out the star spawn. I don't know if Bert can maybe with that shotgun, but I don't know if I want to use the shotgun and pull all the guards towards him. So we'll end our movement here and our turn. Let's draw our next mythos card and we have each investigator in a Raleigh space that we don't have any of those, but that is our second symbol. One more and Cthulhu is going to move forward one space. Because we are in a safe space, we can reveal our next discovery card, and we have the Nervous Figure. I'm in love with a beautiful queen. She demands things. If you're carrying the ceremonial, ceremonial headpiece, no, we don't. Otherwise, you may take two stress to claim the assistant professor. While you have him gain one level of arcane mastery, uh, yeah, we'll take the two stress for that. Increasing our level of arcane mastery allows us to have every star be considered a success. However, our stress is now at max. It's Bert's turn now. He's going to run for his first action, one, two, and he's going to run himself up into this, I don't know, observatory or whatever that is, <laughs> uh, and bring these two cultists with. I could have used the shotgun, but I don't want all the guards in his space, and I'm likely to activate the uh, next elder uh, one advancing, so I didn't really want to do that. So instead, I'm just going to bring him to my space, and I'm going to attack them. We only get three black dice for this attack, and I can only attack one of them. So even if I get three successes on this, I can only take one out with this attack. So let's see. Well, that's going to be two. That'll be enough to take one out, but I also hit my sanity two times. Which, the best part about this game, isn't a terrible thing. <laughs> Let's try this again for our third action, rolling our black dice. That's two successes. We do take out the next cultist, and we have one more hit on our sanity. We're now one space away from leveling up. Let's draw our Mythos card, and we do have our third symbol. Oh, the Shagoth is not out on the board, so we're just going to summon that Shagoth in the yellow gate space. That's, you know, only right here. <laughs> Great. There are no enemies in our space. Plus, we could do this anyways. We get to investigate, and we have the headpiece display. 
This display contains the remains of the most beautiful queen who ever lived. You feel compelled to open the display. You may take two stress to claim the ceremonial headpiece if you do not claim the cursed condition. Well, I don't even want to read what the cursed condition is. So the ceremonial headpiece, when attacking each tentacle, may also count as a success. Boy, I should definitely give that to Maxim. Bert has a shotgun and a headpiece. How awesome is that? <laughs> We do have three of the Elder Sign symbols, so we'll take these Mythos cards, shuffle them back up. Cthulhu will move one space forward. That means we will put a Raleigh token and a Cultist right there with Bert. That is from the Cthulhu card. We also have to move the Star Spawn one space towards you. After this, each guard is going to move one space towards the nearest investigator. There is a guard in this room. I don't know how he is surviving. There's no door here, so it's actually going to move into this room. There's a guard over here. He's going to move one space. I almost forgot to move the star spawn into this room, and the guard is going to follow, and then this guard is going to move here. They're not in the same spaces as us, so we don't have to drop any of our artifacts or go to jail, so we're good to go there. This will complete Bert's turn. Let's now move to Maxim's turn. Maxim is currently in a safe space, so his first action, he's going to rest. He's going to heal by one, and he'll uh, heal up to stress. Our second action, then, will simply move into the same room as this cultist, and for our third action, we'll attack him. We get to roll one extra green die because of our brawler ability, and we have one, two, three successes, but we do hit our sanity at twice. I think I'm okay with that. The cultist is off the board, and our sanity is moved up two spaces. We can now draw our Mythos card, and we have move all guards and cultists one space towards the investigator closest to them. There's a guard here. That cultist is already in Bert's space. There's a cultist, or I should say a guard here. There's a guard here, and there's the guard here. So all four guards have moved. The cultist didn't have to move because it's in Bert's location. So we're still in a safe space. There's no enemies here to attack us, so we get to draw a discovery card. Be something good, be something good. <laughs> we have the Curse of the Mummy. The sarcophagus calls to anyone who is stolen from it. If the sarcophagus token is not on the board, place it in your space. Okay, it is not on the board, so we're going to place this token in our space. If no one has the ceremonial headpiece, claim the cursed condition. Well, you know who has the ceremonial headpiece? is Bert. Otherwise, discard this card, and the investigator with the ceremonial headpiece loses three sanity and takes two wounds. Oh my gosh, that's going to hurt Bert. Two wounds means we'll take two damage here, but the actual good thing about that is that means we're going to place two damage on here, and then three sanity hits. We're just going to stop at this red spot. That will mean we level up, and we're going to activate our um, masochism. The first thing we've got to decide is which one we want to level up, and I think I'm going to do Arcane Mastery for our first level up. Then we have to resolve uh, Masochism. If there are no wound tokens on this card, take a wound. Otherwise, remove all tokens from this card and heal one stress per wound removed. So we'll remove both of those tokens we put there, and we will uh, get two stress back. So that wasn't terrible. And the nice part about that Mythos card, it does not have one of the Elder Sign symbols. Yes! So now we'll move back to Bert. You know what Bert's going to do. He's going to attack that cultist. We're rolling three black dice. That is a total of three successes because we're wearing the ceremonial uh, head headpiece. When attacking, each of those symbols counts as a success. That means we can remove the cultist from the board. We'll also have to move up our sanity by two. Our second action, let's pick up this artifact, and we have heal two stress at the end of your turn. Boy, he is going to be awesome. He can heal one wound and two stress at the end of his turn. Maxim's goal is to try and get to this artifact and then get to this gate space. So I think for Bert, we don't want to deal with this Shagath, so we're going to try and get over here. So for our final action, let's just move three. One, two, uh, three, we're right here. I think the best part about this game is just how quick those turns are. Okay, this also doesn't have the Elder Sign symbol. If Cthulhu is on the board, we can ignore that. If Cthulhu is on the track, each investigator takes two stress. For every stress, you cannot take, take one wound instead. We each can take the two stress, which could be a good thing or a bad thing because now Bert is going to investigate. And a lot of those investigation cards you needed to stress, that's why I really wanted him 
to be here, so he had two stress left. Bummer. Let's see what you got, Bert. Bert will draw his discovery card, and he has the lost dog. Good boy. You may claim the golden retriever or discard it and immediately perform a free trade action as if you were on any space on the board. Oh, because you give it to the dog, and the dog uh, gives it to the other player. Ooh, do I want to do that? No, I want the shotgun. The ceremonial headpiece, it's actually pretty good that I have that. So I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to claim the golden retriever. While you have it, gain one level of swiftness. Here we have our swiftness ability. When you run, you may move one additional space. Definitely will have Bert keep that. At the end of Bert's turn, he'll heal one and two uh, stress because of the two artifacts he has. It's now Maxim's turn. He is going to be risky. He's going to run one two, three, four, getting into this room, and he's going to bring both the Biakshi and <laughs> the Star Spawn into his space. Action two and three, you better believe we're going to be attacking. Because of Maxim's level two brawling ability, he can attack everyone in his space, so we don't have to decide who we're attacking, but our stress is fully maxed out, so what we roll is what we get. Let's see. We get, oh, that's not bad, three total hits. So with those three hits, we can take out the Biakshi for the three damage. That's gone. But then we also have three sanity hits. Because we are losing a sanity, we get to deal one wound to an enemy in our space. We'll do that to the star spawn so it only has six health remaining. We are, though, going to hit one of our thresholds. The star spawn has an ability that if you attack it in a Raleigh space, it adds two sanity to your roll, but they're not in a Raleigh space. They're in an empty space, so we're fine. We did hit this, so that means we get to level up something, and I think I have to go with brawling. I get the two free rerolls when attacking a target in your space. Yeah, definitely going to take that. We also have to trigger this. If you're at full stress, heal all of your stress and discard one discovery card. Oh... That is a bummer, because when we do that, we're going to push down the Arcane Mastery, and we have to discard our uh, Miles uh, Durquist. But that's still better to get all of my stress back. We have one more action. Let's go ahead and attack that star spawn again. It has six health remaining. Let's see what we can do. That's one, two, three, four. That would be five with the sanity. So I do get two free rerolls. Let's use our first one and reroll this. Let's do it again and reroll it a second time. That'll work. One, two, three, four, five damage. One sanity loss also means we can deal one wound to an enemy in our space. Totally done. <laughs> oh, and I didn't mention I have a second green die now because of where I am on my sanity track. We'll take the sanity hit to be able to take off the star spawn on the board. That is amazing. So far, these two are working pretty well together. <laughs> okay, we do have our first Elder Sign symbol. Each investigator in a Raleigh space loses one sanity. None of us are in Raleigh spaces, so we're good there. Because we are in a safe space, we get to draw a discovery card, and we have the scrap of paper, a spell that can temporarily disrupt the cultist spells. You may take two stress to claim the counter spell. If you would be arrested, you may discard this card instead. If you do, place all guards from your space in the cell. Whoa. Yeah, we're taking that. Two stress. And plus, I don't want to be cursed. We do know Maxim isn't great at holding on to his stuff. <laughs> That's because of his short-term memory loss. I love that. But you know what? Uh, that could potentially save us. We'll see. All right, now let's go to Bert. Bert's going to have a nice and simple turn. He's simply going to move one, two, moving into the space with this red gate. Action two, he's going to convince this guard to move two spaces, moving them over here. And action three... We're going to heal up completely, so let's do that same thing to this one. It can be up to two spaces away, and we're going to push this guy way over there. <laughs> Those guards have no idea where Bird is. We'll then draw our Mythos card, and we have our second Elder Symbol. Choose one. Each investigator loses one sanity for each artifact they're carrying, so Bert would lose two and Maxim would lose one, or at the end of the turn, advance the Elder One. No, no, I don't want to advance the Elder One yet because we want to have both artifacts and be at gates at the same time to have that work. So we'll wait on that. We'll just each take the sanity hit. Maxim will just lose one. Bert, unfortunately, is going to lose two. That will mean he hits his masochism again, and he does not have any wounds on here. So it states here, if there are no tokens on this card, take one wound. So he's going to take a wound. That's okay. He can heal that with his artifacts, which is ridiculous. And then he can level up. 
it's between toughness and arcane mastery, I think. And I think I'm going to go for arcane mastery so we can heal stress. If I get this all the way up here, uh, what does it say? You may count any number of stars as two successes each. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Bert is still in a safe space, so I'll flip over his card. He has the sarcophagus. There's an ancient sarcophagus here. Yeah, we know where it is. Odd that you didn't notice it before. If the sarcophagus token is not on the board, place it on, this, on your space. If you are carrying two or more artifacts, claim the cursed condition. Oh, no. So at the end of each of your turns, lose one sanity for each artifact you have or take one stress if you have no artifacts. If you rest in the space with the sarcophagus token, you may discard all of your cursed cards and heal all health and stress. Oh, that is terrible. So at the end of each of your turns, lose one sanity. So he's going to lose two sanity. It's the end of our turn. We have two artifacts. So we're going to heal by two for stress, heal by one because of this, but then lose two sanity, one for each artifact. This is not going to be fun. We've got to get rid of that cursed ability. Okay, now we're back to Maxim's turn. The first thing Maxim is going to do is flip this over, and we will have now one free reroll per turn, which is awesome, and that is the second artifact. Action two, we just need to move ourselves to this gate, and then action three, two spaces away, there's this guard. We're going to distract him, pushing him down here, which of course you can't see, <laughs> but I have him over here to avoid our players, and that should be it. Okay, now all we have to hope for is an elder sign symbol. Otherwise, we're just both going to be standing around at those gates. Let's see what we get. We're going to draw our Mythos card, and we do have our third elder sign symbol. The Shagoth moves two spaces towards you. Any guards in spaces um, it leaves, follow it. Ooh. The Shagoth is going to move one, two. There's guards in their room, but he's not going to leave, so we're good to go. We are in a safe space, so let's draw our discovery card. And we have weapons display, a pistol. When you just need to stop a robbery, you may claim the pistol. Before attacking, you may choose to gain two green dice. If you do, after the attack, move the nearest guard two spaces towards you. Well, that's going to be fine because the guards go away once Cthulhu comes out. So this is just giving us two green dice, which is awesome. Moving to end of turn, we do have three of the elder symbols. That means Cthulhu will move forward one space. And we'll go ahead and shuffle these back into the Mythos deck. We now have to place a Raleigh token in our space, which is a bummer. And we're going to summon a cultist in each space that has a Raleigh token. They're back! <laughs> And of course, the star spawn is not on the board, and guess where he spawns? At the blue gate, right with Maxim. Now though, each guard is going to move one space closer to our uh, investigators, and none of them are in our spaces. And we have two artifacts at two different gates. That is going to disrupt the ritual. That means we can remove all these guards, and let's go ahead and spawn Cthulhu on the board. When revealed, summon Cthulhu into your space. Each enemy in a Raleigh space moves one space towards you. Well, we're in a Raleigh space, and there's that one uh, cultist that will move one space towards us. I almost forgot to mention, at the end of each turn, put a Raleigh token in Cthulhu's space. If there's already a token there, put it in the nearest space that doesn't have one. We now have Cthulhu and the star spawn right here. This uh, cultist will move one space towards Maxim. Oh boy, Maxim might be in some trouble. <laughs> Bert, where are you? Where are you with your pistol? Or not your pistol, you have a shotgun. <laughs> I do also want to mention we have placed the elder sign symbol here in replacement of the miniature since he's out on the board. And now when we get to the red space, nothing additional happens. We lose though if it gets to here. It's now the end of Maxim's turn, so I believe we need to place out a Raleigh token. I will place it out into this room because, of course, our room already has one. Can you imagine right now being Maxim? He ended his turn with nothing in that location. He now has a star spawn, a Cthulhu, and a cultist in his space. Yeah, so Bert says, I'm coming for you. He has that swiftness. One, two, three, four. That's kind of ridiculous. Oh, do we, you know what? We're going to keep taking the sanity hits. I think we're going to have to, uh, at least for now. So that was our first action. Our second action, we're going to attack. And we can do that because of the shotgun. Upon reading the shotgun card more closely, it says, Before attacking, you may choose to gain two green and target any number of enemies in the target's space. But I don't see it saying that we have range. So I don't think we have range attack here. I think it still has to be in Bert's space. So I'm going to change what I'm going to do this turn. 
For action one then, we are going to move one, two, three to move where this sarcophagus is. Action two, I'm going to rest. So if you rest in a space with the sarcophagus token, you may discard all of your cursed cards and heal your health and stress. This means we've gotten rid of that cursed effect, which is great, but now we have a useless action. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this final action. So I think I'm just going to stand where I am. I don't want to run into the space with Maxim because then we're going to get attacked by Cthulhu, the Star Spawn, and the Cultist. And I can't attack them. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to stay where I'm at. Unfortunately, that's not great, but I don't know what else we can do. So we have Star Spawn. Move the Star Spawn two spaces towards you. Then each investigator in its space loses one sanity. That actually is not a bad thing. The Star Spawn will move one, two, getting into the same space as Bert. Bert will lose one sanity, not terrible. And then the star spawn will attack Bert, rolling three black dice, not in a Raleigh space though at least. Uh, no successes, we would have a free reroll, but I'm not going to do anything there, we'll just leave that roll as is. Bert can still investigate because of his ability, so why the heck not? Let's see if we can find something. Ooh, a display of King Arthur's swords, very sharp. You may take one wound and move to the nearest guard, oh, and move the nearest guard two spaces towards you, which we can uh, ignore, to claim the replica sword. You gain one when attacking a target in your space. If you have the brawling or toughness skill, gain two, and we have the toughness and he has brawling? Wow, yeah, we're definitely going to claim that. Take one wound, we can ignore the guard effect. We'll take the one wound, and then, of course, at the end of our turn, we'll heal, and we would uh, heal up our stress, but we're good. Now it's Maxim's turn, and I think it's Cthulhu time. What do you guys think? We need to deal 12 points of damage, and we can attack three times. I do need to remember I need to place a Raleigh token out. I'll do that in a second, but I just want to show you what we're going to roll. So we're going to roll three black dice plus one green plus two green, plus two more. So four green and three black. We're most certainly going to place that Raleigh token over here. <laughs> it makes sense. This is the uh, terrible location where the eldritch enemies are coming out of these crazy looking staircases. So yeah, we're going to attack and then get the heck out of dodge. Don't forget we have one free reroll because of the artifact we have and two free rerolls because of our brawling ability. Let's roll our dice and see what we get. Mm, that does not look good. So we only have level one of Arcane Mastery, so I'm going to keep this one. I definitely want to reroll one of these for our reroll from the artifact. So that's from our artifact. I'll take that. This is one of our two free rerolls from the ability that we have, the Brawling. And this is our second one, and that's nothing. We do have two stress remaining, so let's use one stress to reroll this again. Nothing. And let's use that final stress to roll that up. Still nothing. <laughs> Man, okay, so our total successes, one, two, three, four, five. So five total successes. We do have a sanity hit, so we can deal a wound to something in our space. And we'll do Cthulhu, so that's six total damage out of 12 health for this first stage. Remember, there are three stages we need to defeat. So this is our, well, actually, technically, this is stage two. There's stage two, stage three, and the final stage. We've used up all of our stress, and we do take one sanity hit. Okay, let's try that again for action two, but this time we only get two, three, uh, two rerolls, not three. Seven dice, here we go. Gosh, I love that part of the game. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, plus, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, plus one of these is five, and that uh, loss would be six. That should work. I do have a reroll. Well, let's reroll this because if we reroll it and getting, get successes, we can put it onto that cultist. So we roll that to nothing. We get a second reroll. We roll that for another success. So that means the cultist will take one wound. We will use that one for that. We will then use one, two, three, four, five for Cthulhu. We lose one sanity, but with that one sanity, we'll deal the sixth damage to Cthulhu and take out stage two. This will mean we hit another sanity threshold, which means we'll heal up to full because of our short-term memory loss, but we have to discard one of our discovery cards. Well, I'm totally fine discarding this counterspell. That's not doing anything for us. And we can level up, definitely doing the brawling. Uh, when you attack, you deal full damage to each character in your space. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. We just dealt a total of 12 damage to Cthulhu, so this stage is complete. However, this ability is still going to stay active. We're just going to add to it. 
So the first thing here is they'll, he'll roll an additional green die if he's attacking. We need to deal another 12 damage. And this says, when revealed, move Cthulhu to the blue gate. Well, that means he's going to stay right where he is. Each investigator in a Raleigh space takes one wound and loses one sanity. Well, uh, Maxim is in a Raleigh space. Uh, Bert is not, so he will lose one, <laughs> one damage. He'll take one damage, and he'll lose one sanity. And then, of course, at the end of the round, each investigator is going to lose one sanity. We'll take the one damage and the one sanity hit. I'm a little concerned he's going to get killed. I didn't realize he was going to show up at the blue gate again. This is the best part about the game, you guys. If you don't play a ton with the same uh, elders, elder one, you don't remember their different stages. And I love that. <laughs> if I had known that, maybe I would have moved out of the blue gate or whatnot. But it is what it is, and I've got to deal with it. Maxim has one more action. What do you say we go out with a bang? <laughs> I have a feeling he might get killed with the attack from Cthulhu. But I don't know what else we can do here. Uh, we can't run away. We don't have stealth. So let's just attack the big guy. We've got three black, four green. Let's roll them up. We have a total of one, two, three, and four successes. We get two free rerolls. So let's reroll this one. Uh, no, that's terrible. Let's reroll this one again. Okay, that's a success. We'll use our first stress to roll this one. Nothing. Second stress to roll this one. That will work. Third out of our four stress to roll this one. Beautiful. All right, so for successes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And one of those are successes, seven. Plus, we can have one wound dealt to uh, Cthulhu for eight because of our Mad Dog ability. We used a total of three stress there. We'll take one sanity hit. <laughs> and there really isn't much else we can do. We have to hope we don't take one, two, three, four wounds from attacks. Because if we do... Oh, I do want to mention this uh, cultist in our space totally gone. Because remember, we can deal all of our damage to every figure in our space, which is wonderful. That's what Brawling does for us. Talk about a pretty fun turn, though, if you ask me. We have move all guards and cultists one space towards the investigator closest to them. Eh, that's easy. That just means this cultist will move here. Now we're going to have Cthulhu attack Maxim for three green and two black dice. Ouch. What is Cthulhu going to get? We have one, two, three hits. We can take that. With three damage one two three we're one away from death but we ain't dead yet <laughs> however at the end of our turn the first thing we need to do is place out another raleigh token i'm going to place that in the room right next to us that's right next to bert then each investigator loses a sanity because it's just too hard to even cope having cthulhu out on the board that's going to mean maxim is going to hit a threshold he is not at full stress so that means he's simply going to take one stress. It does also mean we can level up our ability, so we're going to level up Arcane Mastery. Bert also is going to hit a threshold then. Uh, he will take a wound because he did not have any wounds on his masochism, and he is going to level up his Arcane Mastery. So every one of those Elder Sign symbols gives him two successes instead of one. Oh man, and he's got a shotgun. I don't know. And the replica sword. <laughs> this could be fun. And just so you can see it, that Raleigh token, we placed it in that room. The next time we have to place one, it'll be in Bert's room. Okay, now let's go to Bert's turn. Bert is in the same space as that star spawn, so he's going to attack. He has his three black dice. Because of where he is in his insanity, <laughs> he gets one green die. He then has the shotgun. We're definitely going to use that, gaining two green dice. And then he has the sword, and he gains two dice because he does have the toughness skill. Look at all of that. And remember, elder signs, or those stars, are considered two successes for him. Yeah, this is going to be great. Uh, so that actually looks great. How much do we have for damage? We have two, four, six, seven. We have more than enough for damage. We're taking two sanity hits. I actually think I'm okay with that, so we're going to leave it as that. That will be more than enough. We only needed seven to take him out. Two, four, six, seven, done. Bert may have started out as the investigator, but he is becoming the attacking machine. <laughs> Action two, we are Ein Cthulhu. We'll move into here. And action three, we only need to deal four damage to him to take out stage three. Then it's just the final stage. 
We'll roll the same dice pool, and we need one, two, three, four, five, six. That's more than enough. I actually think I'm going to use a stress to reroll this one. I don't want the sanity. If I cannot, of course, I throw it on the ground. Let's try this again. And we, I, we hit that one. So we're going to give ourselves no sanity because I believe that was just a success or a star. But we had more than enough for or more damage. That's stage three completed. We'll remove this card. Let's see what the final stage is. When revealed, move Cthulhu to the starting space. Each investigator must discard all items and companion cards. They may take one wound for each card they wish to keep. <laughs> Well, you know, Bert's going to take three wounds, I think, to keep all of his cards. Uh, Maxim can't take a wound, so he's going to have to discard his pistol. If you need to place a Raleigh token on the board but cannot, each investigator loses two sanity. You know how many I have left? One, two, three, four. So we don't have many turns left to take him out. However, we only need to deal 12 more damage, but he will roll another green and black die when he attacks us. Cthulhu will jump over here. That's his last saving grace, trying to get away from our epic, <laughs> our epic investigators. Bert would like to keep his shotgun, the replica sword, and the dog because he really wants swiftness. One, two, three. That's three wounds. Uh, he is going to discard the ceremonial headpiece. I don't want to, but I can't keep it. Maxim literally can't keep the pistol as much as he wants to. He's going to have to discard it because he can't take any wounds. That was all three of Bert's turns. Let's flip our next card. I hear something, or I heard something. Move all guards and cultists one space towards you. That's a great card. It does not have the Elder Sign symbol. That just means this cultist will move here. <laughs> I'll take that. We are, ironically, in a safe space. Plus, we could do this anyways. We can investigate. And we have a science mannequin. A replica ceramic human with all the organs showing the liver is missing. You may claim the human model. If you have reached two or more insanity thresholds, you may claim Sam instead. Yeah, we definitely have done that. Sam is, while you have him gain one level of brawling oh, or human model, if you would be arrested. Yeah, we don't need a human model. Let's grab Sam, no questions asked. This will now end our turn. We now need to do all of the Cthulhu end of turn effects as well as our artifacts. I'm not sure on the order, so I'm just going to do it in the order that I think is right. <laughs> We're first going to put a Raleigh token in Cthulhu's space. Each investigator is then going to lose one sanity. That means Bert will hit a threshold and technically he would have to take a one wound and get killed. But you know what? He's got Sam over here with two health. So we're going to put that one damage on Sam. Yeah, don't forget he has that brawling, which is awesome. And we also can level something up. Let's level up toughness for him. Then we can heal two stress and one wound. So we're not dead yet. <laughs> All right, Maxim, it's your turn. Maxim's goal is simple. Weaken Cthulhu so that then Bert can take him out. So Maxim will move one, two, three, four, bringing this cultist with. He gets to roll three black dice. He gets to roll two green dice because of where his insanity is at. And then one more because of his brawling effect. And because he is all the way up on his brawling, he will attack all the enemies in his space. So that cultist is likely going to be toast. <laughs> With his brawling, he gets two rerolls, and he has his artifact for one free reroll. Let's roll him up. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Let's use this free reroll. Actually, no. What? Let's use our brawling free reroll to roll this one up. Okay, that looks awesome. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six damage. Oh man, if we do that again, we could just take Cthulhu out right here. So that's our first, uh, or I should say, our second action. And then our third action, let's pick all of these up, roll them out again. One, two, three, four, five, and we get uh, two free rerolls. Let's roll that. That'll work. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll reroll this one. Beautiful. That's the six that we need. <laughs> and that means even though Bert was all ready to go and take out Cthulhu, Maxim says, I got this, and defeats him on the board. That was awesome. <laughs> so there we have it. Hopefully I didn't make too many mistakes. Uh, but yeah, now we have, we've played one of each of these awesome looking uh, Elder Ones. 
I still love this game. <laughs> Let me know what your guys' favorite scenario is and what your favorite Elder One is. I'd like to play at least one more on the channel. So let me know what your favorite scenario and what your favorite uh, Elder One is. And if you have any favorite investigators. And I might try and do one more. As always, thank you so much for watching, subscribing, checking out our podcast, the streaming channel with Steve. Thanks for commenting on this video and liking it. It's just, it really helps us out, keeps us motivated to keep doing all of this work. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you at the next stop.